Hi, and I am Professor Candy Mallon. Uh, my students call me for short promo, and I am here to help prepare you for the HESI prep test mathematics part. Um, there is a two part segment. We will be going over part one uh, at this point in time. And a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been teaching for over 13 years. I have uh, a bachelor's in accounting. I have two master's degree in education, one in online teaching technology and the other in teaching and learning. I have two graduate certificates in mathematics and higher uh, secondary ed mathematics. And I'm also a faculty development uh, certified director. So I've been teaching at uh, several colleges across the United States, all online, and I love it. And I'm glad to be here to help you prepare to take and set for the HESI test. So let's get started here. Uh, we're going to go over different portions that will uh, help you prepare. Uh, we will be looking over some definitions about the topics, looking over specific examples, and this will be recorded so that you can listen to it again and help you prep for taking the mathematics portion of the test. Uh, the overview, we're going to be looking at basic operations, fractions, percents, and related concepts as well as algebra. Uh, when we are dealing with fractions, decimals, um, and related concepts, we're going to be looking at working with rational numbers, converting among the three, fractions, decimals, and percents, and um, comparing different forms. Algebra, we're going to be looking at linear equations in one variables, and we're going to look at how um, algebra is included in real-world problems. Basic math, and this is probably just dusting off a little bit of review, is understanding and utilizing numerical operations. Uh, we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we know how to, to deal with those sometimes when we are dealing with signs. And I'm going to give you a quick overview with that because signs is very important, but they have different rules um, as we use them. And we will be using them when we get into algebra. And that might be just a little bit of a review. Here with addition, we have three po or two positive numbers. Three plus five equals eight. Uh, it's a little simple there. Subtraction, we're used to in, you know, subtracting a smaller number from a larger number. Multiplication, we just multiply and divide. We divide, uh, multiply. But when we're dealing with signs, it's a little bit different. So please take note to what I'm going to go over here in, in very briefly about signs. So with addition, you know, you have two positive numbers, you just you just add. Um, now, when it comes to having two unlike signs, you're going to treat it as a subtraction problem, um, just like in this particular case. Let's say uh, we have 4 minus 7. Okay, we have two unlike signs. We have a negative and a positive. Here we uh, are looking at a positive first. Okay, so when you have a two unlike signs, in this case, we are going to subtract as we normally would, look at the larger number, whatever sign is in front of that larger number, we carry that to our answer. So we're just going to subtract four from seven is three, which we look at the larger number is seven. In front of it is a negative, and we're going to carry that to our answer. So that's a little bit of a, a different rule of, of looking at different signs. Now, if we have like signs that are negative, let's say we have a negative 5 and a negative 8. Okay, two like signs, both are negative. We're going to treat that as addition and then just carry the common sign to the end. So we carry our common sign, negative 5 and 3 are uh, or 5 and 8 or 13. Now, that's with subtraction and addition. Completely different with multiplication and division. If you are multiplying or dividing, and that's the same for both of those operations, if you're multiplying or dividing by two like signs, okay, multiplying by uh, two negatives or two positives, the answer is positive. So a negative times a ne negative is a positive. Positive times a positive is a positive. Same with division. Now, 
unlike sines, if you have a negative times a positive, it is going to be a negative, okay? Or dividing a negative times a positive, it's going to be a negative. Unlike sines, it's negative. Like sines, it's positive when we're dealing with um, multiplication and division. Now, base number system, there's 10 digits, um, 0 through 9. Place values are used by uh, to name by number, millions, hundred thousands, ten thousands, thousands, hundreds, tens, ones. Um, when you're dealing with that, look, it's, it's S, not THS. That's what we're dealing with when we introduce decimals here in a few minutes. For example, 52, we write it in, in a language is, or in English, 52, 1003 is 1003. Uh, and then when we have 100,000, we put a hyphen there with 123,486. Why base 10 facilitates operations by developing procedures for computing numbers. Um, we look here at a couple examples. And it can be done up by lying uh, up the place values. This, this is kind of what I was used to, the good old math. Uh, it's not common core now. So we add them up, line them up, um, and we can divide long division or uh, in multiplication in this case, we multiply and then we add the two uh, lines. Decimals is considered a portion of a whole or um, 100%. Uh, for example, 0.5 uh, is a half of a whole, so 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is 1. Uh, 0.25 is a quarter of a whole. Decimals also have place values, and here we can introduce the THS, tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousandths. Um, some useful facts. Percent means 100 or divided by 100. In some of these examples, folks, I'm going to be giving you something that I feel is a way that's easier maybe than what's presented um, on the PowerPoints. But I will show you both and whichever one you feel uh, you like to, to uh, solve with better, then please use whichever one you prefer. Uh, a fraction uh, with the numerator equal to the denominator is equal to 1. So 100% is equal to 1. Um, you multiply a number by uh, something equivalent to one, may change the form of a number, but not change the value. Uh, for example, if you're dealing with fractions, and we all know when you add uh, and subtract fractions, you must have a like denominator. Denominator is the one below or the one at the bottom of the fraction. Um, sometimes when you're dealing with one, and get my pen here working, one over one, okay, is one. Or if you say 6 over 6, okay, we changed our denominator to 6, but it still is equal to 1. So sometimes that's very handy when we are uh, dealing with adding and subtracting of fractions. Converting a fraction to a decimal. You can use a calculator. Uh, you can divide the numerator, which is our um, top or above the fraction line by the denominator, which is the bottom, and round if ne necessary. Make sure you're very uh, alert on what the problem says, especially rounding with decimals to the tenths, hundredths, whatever position. Uh, convert 22 over 48 to a decimal, round to the nearest hundredth. Um, so you round to the nearest hundredth, the answer would be 0.46. Now, you look to the right of the position that we are looking at. Nearest hundredth is the five position right next beside it is eight. Anything five and greater, you round up. If it is below five, then you keep it the same and then just wipe out the, the remaining to the right of that. Um, so we raise the five to a six to 0.46. When you convert a decimal to a fraction, you can multiply both numerator and denominator to get rid of the decimal, reduce the fraction. Convert 45.8 to a fraction. You can multiply by tenths, which is because the 0.8 is in the tenth, tenths position, to get rid of decimals. Some people find that it's easier. By doing that, it increased the 45.8 to 458 divided by 10, and then it is reduces to 229 over 5. Uh, converting a fraction to a percent, 
Um, I like to, to think of this, uh, and it cuts down on a lot of steps. Uh, of course, you can use a good old calculator. You can convert 25 over 40, 400 to a percent, round to the nearest tenth. Divide the uh, denominator 400 into the numerator 25. You get a decimal, okay, 0 0.0625. Now, if you are looking at converting a fraction to a percent, and then keep this in mind, when you have a percent and you're converting it technically to a decimal to a percent, it's moving the decimal places two places to the right and adding the percent sign, and then you have to convert or round um, as needed. Okay, so 0 0.0625, move the decimal places two to the right, 6.25, add the percent sign, it says to the nearest tenth, we look at 0.2, we look to the right of it, it's five, so we round up 6.3%. Now, converting a percent to a fraction, percent means per hundred or divided by 100. You can write a fraction with 100 as the denominator, multiply to get rid of the decimal, reduce the fraction if necessary. Okay, 23.5 to a fraction, you can place it over 100, 23.5 over 100. Now, converting, as I said, a decimal to the percent, it is initially moving the decimal point two places to the right, adding the percent sign. So point 569 is equal to 56.9 percent. If we want to convert 23.692 to a percent, we move it two places and then add our percent sign. So this becomes 22,369.2 percent. Now, converting a percent to a decimal, this means per hundred, what we do is we and take away the percent sign, and initially it's just the opposite, moving the decimal place two places to the left. So 14%, we take away the percent sign, move it two places to the left, and we get 0.14. Uh, there again, convert 84.54% to a decimal, wipe away the percent sign, move it two places to the left, 0.8454. So if you're converting a decimal to a percent, move it to the right two places. If you're going from a percent to a decimal, wipe away the percent sign and move it two places to the left. Uh, comparing fractions, decimals, and percents, convert all numbers to the same form. Converting to decimals is easy, and then use your calculator. Uh, when you're comparing numbers as directed, which numbers are equal or which number is largest or smallest, put into ascending or descending order. Sometimes you will be asked um, to compare, as in this example. Find the largest or smallest number. Which of the following numbers is largest? For 25ths, 12% or 0.15. Okay, what we're going to do is convert everything to a decimal. Uh, of course, we're going to leave 0.15 the same. Uh, four, point, 4 over 25, convert it, and divide, and you get 0.16. And 12%, we can convert to 0.12. So since 0.16 is the largest decimal, then 1 25ths is the largest. And then always state the original value as which one is um, largest or smallest. Finding equal numbers, which of the following numbers are equal? We have some decimals, fractions, and percents. So we convert everything to decimals. It's easier. So 1 eighth as a decimal is 0.125. 1 25ths is 0 0.04. 1.25% uh, as a decimal. Uh, we move it to the left. It becomes 0.0125. 12.5% as a decimal equivalent is 0.125, and 1.8 equals uh, a def decimal conversion to 0 0.018. Okay, so uh, the numbers 1 8, 0.125, and 12.5 are all equal. Even though when you look at those, you have to convert it to see what the equality uh, is. And that's how you would do that, finding equal numbers. 
writing numbers in order, right? The following numbers in descending order. There again, we have a mixture of percents, fractions, and decimals. Uh, again, we want to make to decimal equivalent. 15.15% is 0 0.0015, 15% is 0.15, and pardon me, uh, 2 sevenths is 0 0.286, and 25 over 3 is uh, 8.3. Uh, when we are asked to do it in descending order, it is greatest to least. So we can place our uh, decimals 12.327, 8 8.3, 0 0.286, 0 0.15, 0 0.039, and 0 0.0015. Then put them in the original as they are stated, and then just put the equality um, in that particular uh, order. Working with rational numbers, we're going to look at uh, operations on fractions, simplifying expressions using the order of operations, and comparing and ordering rational numbers and square roots. Uh, equivalent fractions, multiplying a number by something equal to 1. It may change its form, does not change its value. Uh, so uh, 2 fifths, if you multiply 2 fifths, as I said, by 4 over 5, that's as if you're multiplying it by 1. Um, so you can do 2 times uh, 4 is 8, and 5 times 4 is 20. Reduces, 8 twentieths reduces to 2 fifths. Reducing fractions, um, always reduce uh, and do what you, you know, do it in numerator and denominator. Do not leave them without down to where it is no longer uh, as, as two fifths, it's no longer reducible. Uh, adding and subtracting fractions, uh, you have to have equivalent fractions in the denominator denominator position. So that means we're looking for the least common denominator if we are asked to add two thirds and plus five four fifths. What I like to do is take the denominator of each. Might take you a little bit more time, but it does help you identify. Um, three and five, you know, they're pretty easy. We kind of know what we, we can use to convert them. But when you get up to maybe some not familiar numbers, it's easier to write it down. So here you take your three and say, uh, you know, three times one is that should be three. Three times two is six. Three times three is nine. 3 times 12, or 4 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15. Then you take the 5, 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3 is 15. When you get to one that matches, that is the LCD, the least common denominator. So we can convert that. What we have to do is look at each fraction independently, convert the denominator to 15, and then we perform the operation uh, required. Here, two-thirds, we say, okay, three can go into 15 five times. We're going to multiply five times numerator, five times denominator. Two times five is 10. Three times five is your 15. Take our four-fifths. What times five will make 15? Well, of course, three. Take three times numerator, three times denominator. Four times three is 12. Again, five times three is 15. Now we have like denominators. Uh, we can perform the addition. 10 and plus 12 is 22. And we carry our 15 down to our answer. 22 over 15. It is in simplest terms. That is our correct answer. Multiplying fractions. Uh, just take numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator. If you can reduce before you get to the answer, uh, you can cross multiply by reducing. In this case, we look at it, we can't. So 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 3 is 9. It is an improper fraction. Improper fraction are those where the numerator is larger than the denominator. Again, you can reduce. Um, here we have 2 thirds times 3 tenths, we can reduce before we even get and don't have to multiply 2 times 3 is 6 and 3 times um, 10 is 30. We can reduce and save a step. That extra step could be that margin of error. So 2 goes into 10 five times, 3 and 3 cancel. So we're left with 1 fifth, and that is how we can reduce. Dividing, uh, we multiply right by the reciprocal. We Ch keep, change, flip. 
So we keep our first fraction, two-thirds, we change the division sign to multiplication, and we flip, or the reciprocal of our second fraction, from five-fourths, we flip it to four-fifths. Can we reduce? No, we can't. So we multiply numerator, two times four is eight. Denominator, three times five is 15. Eight-fifteenths, simplest form, and that is our answer. Uh, we can reduce. Uh, again, keep the two-thirds, uh, two change the division to multiplication, and flip. And there we have uh, two-thirds. We can look here. Here is where we can reduce two. Whoops. Two into four is two. So we can, this you don't even have to, to uh, use unless you want it. I think it's a little confusing. So we have one times five is five. Three times two is six. Five sixth. Okay, reduce. And then you have your answer. Now, mixed numbers, keep as mixed numbers or convert to a, an improper fraction, depending on uh, what the directions ask. Here, you can convert 3 and 1 half plus um, 8 and 1 third. One way to do it, um, I don't always advise this way, but I'm introducing you to that. Uh, what you can do is take your whole numbers, 3 and 8, add them together, and then convert your uh, fractions into uh Finding the least common denominator, um, 3 and 8 are 11. We can convert 1 half to 3 sixths, 1 third to 2 sixths. Add them, get 5 sixths, so 11 and 5 sixths. Now, here, if you want to convert them um, into improper fractions, what we need to do is you take your denominator of your fraction, multiply it by the whole number. That's why we say mixed numbers. It's a whole number and a fraction. So take two, the denominator, times the whole number. Three is six. Add one. Seven is our new numerator, and we keep our two as our denominator. Here, three times eight is 24, plus one is 25, and then we keep our numerator here. There again, we just have to convert our uh, two and six. 3 to 6, least common denominator, and then multiply our numerator denominator by 3 for 7 over 2 and get 21 over 6, and 2 um, by 25 over 3 and get 50 over 6, add 21 and 50 is 71 over 6, then convert it back to a mixed number, divide 6 into 71, and you get 11 and 5, 6 because of a remainder. So there's the two two ways you can uh, complete, and you can see that they both give you the same answer. Now, uh, order of operation. This is working with national, natural numbers and simplifying. PEMDAS is an acronym to remember the orders of operation. Uh, parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division left to right, addition and subtraction left to right. Now, what I do is I kind of get a little catchy uh, way to remember that PEMDAS is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please is your parentheses, excuse is your exponents, my is for multiplication, dear is D for division, and A for addition, and Sally is S for subtraction. So it's a kind of a cute little way to remember PEMDAS or your orders of operation. Um, expressing uh, containing integers expressions, what you want to do here is uh, multiply what is in the, the parentheses first. 5 times 3 is uh, 15. Uh, then you are going to uh, subtract, get a negative 13 squared or taking it times itself. Um, is 116 plus 12 divided by 3. Take your division then. 3 divided by into 12 is 4. Then you add and you have your 173. Uh, if it contains decimals, same thing, same thing, unless you want to multiply everything by 10 to you know get rid of the decimals. But it's the same procedure, folks, and get 10.33. Now, when you're dealing um, with fractions in this case, um, we can, again, take the 5 over 2 and the division, and you're going to multiply and flip to 2 fifths. 
uh, then what we can do here is uh, we are going to be looking at reducing um, the three and uh, two thirds and uh, look at where we can and flip. Then we get two thirds plus three tenths. What we're going to do to convert to a uh, three and ten to thirty, two thirds um, times ten over ten is twenty over thirty, and then uh, three ten over ten, three tenths times three over three is nine over thirty. Twenty nine over thirty is your uh, answer. Now, uh, working and comparing um, rational numbers and ordering, you convert to the same form, decimals are re recommended, and then compare or order. Uh, if you convert a square root to a decimal, it says to the nearest tenth. With square roots, we are always looking at identifying a perfect square. Perfect square is anything times itself. For example, square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. That is a perfect square. Square root of 16, it's a perfect square, 4 times 4. So to convert the square root of 10, it is between 3 and 4. Um, you do have a square root function key on a calculator. So if you do 3.5 to the second power, it's 12.25. 3.2 to the second power is 10.24. It's lower. And so you keep going. So since the uh, answer is above 3.15 and you, you're rounding it to the nearest tenth, it rounds to 3.2. So technically, um, the square root of 10 is approximately 3.2. And if I look here and take the square root, and um, square root 10, it is 3.16227766. So you know we were very, very close there. Um, inequality symbols, okay? Equals, of course, is equal to, um, we have our greater than, with we have our, 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 it looks like a beak, the bigger portion is to the left. Uh, when it's to the right, it's less than. If we add a, a line under it, it's greater than or equal to. Line under less than is less than or equal to. Uh, when we use a number line, okay, zero is our halfway point between positive and negative numbers. Um, to the right of zero are positive numbers. They get larger as we go to the right. To the left of zero are negative numbers. They get smaller as we go to the left to infinity. Um, so here uh, you can compare quantities greater than, farther to the right, less than, farther to the left. And we can see that by uh, some of the indications there. Uh, convert all numbers to decimals, locate on a number line, and then you're going to put it in order. Now here, uh, if we have uh, 2.5, square root of 10, negative 3, and negative 15 over 4 from least to greatest, we convert them to decimals. Um, order decimals from least to greatest, negative 3. 0.75, negative 3, 2.5, 3.2, and then if you put them in uh, order as original. Always go back to the original order after you have figured out which is the greatest or least. Okay, so that's what you want to do um, when you are comparing. You need to do that on your test. Now, let's take a break for five minutes, uh, let you absorb that. I know that's a lot to absorb, so we're going to take about a five-minute break, and then I will come back and we'll continue with part one of uh, your prep.
Okay, so let's get started again. Um, we're going to look at now numbers and algebra. Uh, we're going to look at linear equations in one variable, including real world problems and some other real, real problems. And I think people understand mathematics a little bit better when they can relate to why we use math and what we're doing and, and how we can go. So, uh, you know, we'll see, see what we want to look at there. Okay, um, so we're going to look at solving linear equations, translating phrases and sentences in, into algebra, and real-world problems with linear equations. Okay, so what our goal is, is uh, finding, we have x by itself on one side of the equation and the solution um, or constant on the other side, x equals. For example, we solve for x. Uh, what we use is the distributive property. Anything outside of parentheses, we multiply by everything inside, and that gets rid of our parentheses. That's one of our goals. So 3 times 4x is 5x, and 3 times a negative, remember 2 unlike signs, is going to be a uh, positive 6. And we look at it, you know, in that, in that, in that portion. And then we look at adding these two together. Uh, when we have what we call an algebraic equation, they are two expressions connected by an equal sign. So that's what we're looking here um, at isolating the x to one side. Um, sometimes you'll see multiplication as an asterisk or a dot. This is because our most common variable or unknown letter is a X and you know we we want that to be uh, not you know confused with um, the letter X and the multiplication sign. So let's continue uh, with that in mind. Uh, we it's going to be like a balance sign a balance scale. Um, you know, we want to, whatever you do to the right to isolate and solve, you're going to do to, to the left. Uh, so, we want to do that. So, as I said, distributive property, you distribute it 3 times 4x, 12x, 3 times a negative 2 is a negative 6 plus 2, and then we remove the parentheses. Now, we can combine what we like terms. Like terms can be 12x and 5x, or it also can be whole numbers. Um, so, here we go. What can we do here? Well, so here we say, okay, so what is there anything we can do? Okay, is there anything we can do? Well, yes, we can take a negative plus a positive. Well, remember, we subtract, look at our old, uh, our largest number, and then we bring down that sign. Okay, and there we go. Now, using inverse opposite operations, we have our four arithmetic operations, you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and we decide which is an inverse. Uh, inverse of addition is subtraction. Inverse of subtraction is addition. Inverse of multiplication is division. Inverse of division is multiplication. So keep that in mind when you're dealing with algebra. Uh, any operation you perform on one side of the equation, you must perform on the other. So if you multiply by 2 on the left, you multiply by 2 on the right. And you, you think of it as a balance scale. Um, there's a balance scale. So if you put 10 pounds on the left and 5 pounds on the right, it's going to tip and it's not going to be in balance. Think of that with a, an equation. We want it to balance. We want it to equal each other. If not, it's going to not be the correct answer. So uh, only 1x. So you use the inverse operations to have x on the one side. So since um, 12x is larger, we're going to bring over 5x. Um, so we're going to subtract 5x from both sides, and I like to put it here, put 5x here, okay, subtract 5x on the left, 5x on the right, and um, that gives us uh, 7x uh, minus 4 equals 17. These cancel, okay, so now we're starting to get everything on the one side, 
So then um, to uh, isolate that X or that unknown, um, we're going to add 4 to the left, add 4 to the right. That gives us 7X equals 21. 7X is like saying multiplication, 7 times a number equals 21. So uh, the inverse of uh, multiplication is division. You're going to divide 7 uh, on the right, 7 on the left, and X equals 3. Okay, so that is how we solve, and you can check it back into the, um, you know, original equation, or look right here, okay, and plug it in, and it does equal. Now, the method summary um, of how we solve that, use the distributive property to do, remove any parentheses that may come, combine like terms, have the variable on one side of the equation, get rid of any constants on the variable side of the equation by adding or subtracting, and then get rid of the coefficient of the variable. Um, here we look at this particular example, 3x minus 5 equals 7x plus 7, and we're solving and isolating for the unknown uh, x. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to subtract x from the right and left. That gives us 2x minus 5 equals 7. Um, now we have a subtraction, so the opposite of subtraction is addition. So we're going to add 5 to the left. 5 to the right gives us 2x equals 12. Divide both sides by 2 to isolate x, and x equals 6. We can do fractions. Um, Again, distributive property, um, we're going to distribute 4 times everything enclosed in the parentheses. 4 times 7x is 28x. 4 times a negative 3 is negative 12. And then we just combine like terms, uh, and then we whittle our way down to one single operation, which is 15 equals 26x. Divide both sides by 26, and we get 15 over 26 equals x, and that is correct. Make sure, again, it is in simplest terms. Um, here, we can solve 2 fifths x plus 7 equals negative 2 fifths x minus 3, right? So what we can do is um, add 2 fifths x to the right and to the left, and we get 4 fifths x plus 7 equals negative 3, subtract uh, 7 from both sides, you are going to get then uh, 4 fifths x equals negative 10. We're going to do the reciprocal, or we're going to divide both sides, uh, or we're going to multiply both sides by 5, um, and that leaves us with x equals uh, 5 fourths times negative 10, and then it's negative 25 over 2. Now, sometimes we are asked to translate um, real-world problems into algebra. Um, there again, I'm going to give you a step where it's almost like playing a detective uh, when you're given real-world problems. Uh, you can translate to an expression, an equation, or an inequality. Define the variables. Decide on the operation or the indicators, and then translate into chunks. Now, one thing I like to do is read it through and then reread it and take steps. You know, what do we know? What information is provided? What are we looking for? What what we don't know? Then, you know, uh, use variables that indicate what we're looking for, what we have. Put it into a solution plan, which I call a solution plan, is your equation. Then solve and decide, does that make sense? Does that answer seem feasible to what the question is asking? Then you can always plug it back in and check it into the original equation and then see if it is correct. So an expression, it translates to an uh, English phrase. Example, 3x uh, minus 5 or 7 times the quantity, 5x plus 6. Simply, if possible, you know, if you can simplify um, so if you translate into an English sentence, that contains your equal sign. For example, 3x minus 5 equals 2. Uh, and then you solve. You have two expressions. You put them together with an equal sign. Um, it is an algebraic equation. It's just a, a, a word, uh, you know, it's like a, a sentence, but it's a math sentence. Uh, to define variables, pick a variable for each unknown. It can be a letter that has some meaning. Uh, for example, if you're looking for a number, it can be n, 
Okay, that associates with number. If you're looking for distance, uh, sometimes a real world problem is looking for distance. You can use D. Time, T, height, H, helps you remember. Um, indicators. This can help you when you're putting your solution plan together or your equation. If you see some of these indicators, these words will help you determine what operation to use. Addition, plus, and, more, and sum, total. Uh, subtraction, minus, less, difference, decrease. Multiplication, times, product, twice, double. Also, a big or a little word, but is a big indicator of multiplication is the word or. Uh, division, share equality, quotient. Uh, here, again, are your inequalities. Okay, You can put that into a real-world situation. When you're dealing with inequality equations, same procedure that we just did in algebraic, except the equal sign is an inequality, but you do the same procedure to get down and, and, and solve for um, that unknown variable. Write an expression for the following. Two more than five times a number. Okay, well, let's define the variable. Let n be number. Two more translates to addition or plus two. Five times a number translate to 5n. So we have 5n plus two. That is from our English to our math sentence. Uh, two more than five times a number is 52. The word is indicates equal. Okay, so again, we're going to let n be the number. We have our translate to plus two. Five times is 5n. So it's 5n plus two equals 52. Now we have an algebraic equation. Uh, write an inequality for the following. Hannah has more cookies than Alice and Eric combined. So we can have H for the number of cookies Aunt Hannah has, A for the number of cookies Alice has, and E the number of cookies that Eric has. So Hannah has more than um, Alice and Eric combined. Alex or Hannah is greater than A plus E. Uh, let's give a list of given information, um, unless, ob uh, ob uh, yeah, obviously unnecessary, and use variables. This is identifying the important information when you reread through um, your word problem. What do you need to find? Decide what you are trying to find. Look for key words. Find what is, how much, how many, etc. How can you get there? Well, you write your solution plan or your inequality. Use a formula. Make a table. Sometimes it's good to do a, a sketch. Um, if you're looking for the perimeter of a yard, you know what? identify your length and width. Um, so let's look at an example here and how we can put it together. Carlos and Andrea both have marbles. Together they have 21 marbles. Andrea has twice as many marbles as Carlos. How many marbles does Carlos have? Okay, we read through it. Now we're going to dissect it. Uh, what do we know? Well, um, we're going to first identify variables. C is going to be the marbles that Carlos has. A is Andrea's marbles. So we have our unknowns or our uh, variables. Um, together, they have 21 marbles. Andrea has twice as many marbles as Carlos. So now we can start to put together. We, we know that um, together they have 21 marbles. We know Andrea has twice as many marbles as Carlos. How many marbles does Carlos have? That is our unknown. So what we can say is, um, we can say C plus A equals 21. Carlos plus Andrea equals 21. We know that Andrea, Andrea has twice as many um, marbles as Carlos. So we're going to let Andrea equal 2C. OK, and then Carlos is just plain old C. Put it into a solution plan. We can make it into one single equation by substituting C plus 2C equals 21. OK, and then we combine like terms. C plus 2C is 3C equals 21. We are going to divide both sides by 3 and we get Carlos has seven marbles. Okay, Carlos has seven 
and Andrea has twice as many. That means Carlos, okay, good old Carlos, is at C. That's seven. Andrea, okay, Andrea had twice as many. So 2C, okay, 2 times is 14. Add them together, and it is 21 total marbles. So that's how we find and check our answers. Okay, and there's our answer. Carlos has seven marbles. Okay, does the answer seem reasonable? Okay, and then we just went back and we checked it, and yes, it does. It tells us everything we needed to do. She had twice as many. Add them together, and it does equal 21. Okay, uh, we can take a minute break, uh, and then we'll come back in here and finish up. Um, so just take one minute break, stretch, stand up, and then we will be back in, in a few minutes. on. Um, what we want to look at is other real world problems that might use uh, percent estimation, proportions, ratios, and rates of change. Um, you know, a lot of businesses use different things for estimation and percentage. Uh, percent, again, we talked as part of a whole. Percent is equal to the portion divided by the total times 100. Uh, let's look at a, a, an example here. We can relate to that. There are 2,380 students at Hamstone Academy. 485 of those students are taking a foreign language class. Approximately what percentage of students of Hamstone Academy are taking a language? Okay, we take the portion, 485 over the total, 2,380, multiply it by 100, um, it gives you 20%. So approximately 20% of the students are taking a foreign language. It's looking at a percent as a whole. Percent of a number, again, it means 100 divided by 100. Uh, write the percent as a decimal. Uh, you pick a variable for the unknown, translate the sentence into a, an equation, write the percent uh, of as percent times, solve the equation, answer the question. So sometimes you're asked to ask to, uh, finding a portion. Uh, what is 20% of 65? Let the unknown value be x. So what is x equals is? 20% uh, as a decimal equivalent, 0 0.20 or 0.2 of, okay, is multiplication, um, 65, okay, x equals 13, 20% of 65 is 13. Uh, here's a little way, another way to uh, look at it in, in a couple different uh, wordages. 48 is 5% of what number? Again, let x be the unknown. 48 is is equal, 5% is a decimal, 0 0.05 of times what number? X, uh, we have 48 equals 0 0.05 X. It's multiplication, opposite of multiplication is division. Divide both sides by 0 0.05 and you get X equals 960. 48, <coughs> excuse me, is 5% of 960. Uh, sometimes, Companies want to look at percent of change, increase or decrease, uh, percent increases, tax, markup, profit, or simple interest, percent decreases or discounts or loss. Percent change is equal to the amount of change divided by the initial value times 100%. And this is used to, to help look at analysis of uh, maybe memberships, if they increase or decrease. It tells you what maybe you're doing better or, or what you can improve, improve on. So these are our real-world uh, usage. 
Alex bought a painting for $400 and sold it for $450. What was his percent profit? We use our formula. Okay, it's the amount of the profit. So it's what the original or what he sold it for, $450 minus the uh, original $400 divided by the original price, $400 times $100. $50 over $400 times $100 is 12.5% was Alex profit. Uh, how about a decrease? A pair of jeans is on sale for $58. The original price is $83. What is the percent discount? Take the uh, original price, 83, minus the sales price, divided by the original 83 times 100, $25 over 83. Discount is approximately 30%. Now, percent of a compliment. Compliment, opposite or not. Uh, 50 people rode the bus one rainy day. 30 of those people carried umbrellas. What percent of the bus riders did not carry umbrellas? There again, folks, you know, you're going to have to read it a couple times. Sometimes you see something and read it different. So make sure you do uh, read it correctly and understand what you're looking for. Since 30 of the bus riders carried umbrellas, the other 20 bus riders did not carry umbrellas. So you have 20 over 50 is 40%. 40% of the bus riders did not carry umbrellas. Rounding rules. Again, round to the nearest whatever. Look at the place right next to the, uh, the right of what you're looking for. Five or greater round up. Less than five round down. Keep the same. For example, 246.53 to the nearest tenth. Five is the tenth place. The next digit to the right is three. Since three is less than five, we round down or keep the five as it is. The answer, 247.5. <clears throat> Oops. Um, okay, round 247.53 to the nearest tenth. Um, the four is in the tenth place. The next digit to the right is seven. Since seven is greater uh, or five or greater, round up. The four becomes five. Answer is two fifty. Okay, we're looking at ten. Okay, not tenths, but ten. We're looking at the whole number to the left. Philip needs to buy 480, uh, 500, 458 loaves of bread for a soup kitchen. Uh, each loaf costs one dollar and ninety five cents. Philip wants to estimate the total cost of bread. Four hundred and uh, 58 rounded to the nearest tenth is 450. Okay, because we look to the right, it's eight round up 450. Okay, uh, one dollar and 95 rounded to the nearest dollar. One's place is two dollars. Total of pro cost approximately 450 times two, 900 dollars. Uh, a little bit about metric. Okay, a lot of uh, medical uh, students use metric. Uh, and you want to familiarize with these length in uh, U.S. customary is in compared to meter in metric. Uh, mass in metric is or U.S. customary to gram. Volume, liter or cubic centimeter. Temperature is degrees Celsius in metric. Make sure you note one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. OK, so, uh, you know, you your medical students, you will do that. OK, so prefixes um, kilo meaning one thousand uh, example, one kilometer equals one thousand meters. Seni is smaller and milli is really small. So you want these are handy dandy uh, charts. Um, Approximations, millimeter, the thickness of a dime, a centimeter is the width of an average pinky fingernail, meter is the average adult is 1.5 to 2 uh, meters tall, kilo, the average adult walks 1 uh, kilometer in about 15 minutes, gram is used as weight, weight of one aspirin tablet, kilo is about 5 pounds of sugar, it weighs about 6 kilograms, and degrees Celsius, Zero is freezing, 10 is not, 20 is warm, 30 is hot. So how about proportions? Two fractions or ratios set to equal. Um, there again, you want to make sure you have two-thirds and four-sixths. 
Okay, six miles, two hours, three miles, one hours. We have the miles on top as numerators, hours as denominators. 20 boys compared to 15 girls. See, you have boys and boys, girls and girls. You want to make sure you have them uniform when you're doing this. Okay, so you want to know the height of a tree. You can't measure it directly, but you can determine the uh, height by using your uh, height, the length of the shadow, and the length of the tree shadow. So your height is 2 meters. Your shadow is 0.5 meters. The tree shadow is 1.5. So tree height, your height equals tree shadow, your shadow. H, we're going to look for height of the tree. 2 meters is yours. Uh, tree shadow is 1.5 and your shadow is 0.5. What we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply. Okay, so <clears throat> you have 0.5 times h equals 2 times 1.5. Um, then you have 0.5 equals 30. You're going to divide both sides by 0.5, and that equals 3 over 0.5. Height is 6 meters. Okay. Now, what you want to do is uh, the constant of proportionality. Const const constant ratios between two proportionate qualities, that is the rate of change. Y equals K times X, where K is the constant of the proportionality. Each side of a triangle, A, is three times the corresponding side of triangle B. The constant of proportionality of, of the length is uh, angle A to angle B. One third, or three over one, equals three. Now, let's look at a map. Uh, Alfonso is using a map to determine how far it is to Miami to New York City. The map scale says one inch equals 200 miles. The distance on the map between the two cities is 5.5 inches. Approximately, what is the real distance between the cities? Okay, we have mile and inches. We want to look at the miles, what the distance between the cities over the 5.5 inches. So we're going to multiply. You can do it this way instead of cross multiplying. You can do 200 times 5.5 all divided by 1. Inch, it's approximately 1,100 miles. Now, uh, ratios are comparisons of two sizes of two numbers or measurement terms. You can have a nursery as two workers for every babies. The ratio of workers to babies is 2 to 5. The ratio of babies to workers, 5 to 2. Uh, find a ratio, okay? A drawer contains five red pencils, three blue pencils, and two green pencils. What is the ratio of red pencils to blue? Okay, red is five, blue, five to three. What is the ratio of green pencils to red pencils? Green pencils is two to five. That's finding your ratio. Uh, rate of change, a ratio of two quantities with different units. How one quantity changes in relationship to the other quantity. Often, um, this is in times of miles per hour, steps per day, dollars per hour, gallons um, per year. Often seen as an average rate, or it's uh, consistent with equal, consistent of proportionality. So, the rate of change Amy walks 50,525 steps in five days. What was her average rate in steps per day. Total, 50,525 over five days. Um, and then we look, that equals um, dividing 10,105 steps per day. Um, rate with a denominator of one unit. This is called divisional analysis. 30 miles one hour equals 30 miles per hour. $5 one sandwich, $5 per sandwich. Uh, if you're converting, if you have three cans of corn that cost $1.20, what is the cost per can? Okay, what unit rate? Dollars per can or cans per dollar? Well, we want to use dollars per can. So write it as $1 per three cans. Divide and find the rate of units. It's 40 cents per can. Uh, Rose drove 523 miles from San Diego to San Francisco with an average speed of 60 miles per hour. Distance times speed. Um, how long did the trip take? Distance equals rate times time. Fill in what you know. Uh, as long as you have two of the three, you can always find the other in a, in a formula. 
distance is 523, rate was 60 miles per hour times time. Um, we're going to divide both sides by 60, and the trip took approximately 8.7 hours. So that is the end of your first part of the lesson. Um, I will be doing a recording for part two, and that will be uh, shortly. So you can, again, prepare for the test by watching both parts. Good luck, and thank you for listening.